the WrestleMania 40 main event is confirmed. Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins talk WWE contracts. Sting didn't want to win the AEW tag titles. I am Luke Owen, and this is the Wrestle Talk News. Support Wrestle Talk. Before we get into everything, I just wanted to apologize. Many of you voiced your displeasure over yesterday's Wrestle Talk news, and for that, I am sorry. I misjudged how interested you'd be in that story, which I thought was a fun, well, fun's the key word, a fun and interesting story. But I know that you expect better of us, so I am sorry, and we will strive to do better. Yesterday, WWE were in Las Vegas for their WWE kickoff press conference extravaganza. And while, yes, Triple H talked about the new era of WWE, and Bianca Belair talked about her journey to Wrestle Mania, blah, 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 get to the Cody stuff already. Amazingly, the Cody bit was less of a press conference and more of just a segment from Raw or SmackDown. So I will treat it as such. So here's my review of Cody's choice for WrestleMania in about two minutes. Seth Rollins was out on the stage making jokes about getting pops and he wanted to bring out Cody Rhodes. Instead, Roman Reigns came out to an actual pop Seth. Rollins made jokes about Roman actually coming to work. Roman replied, making fun of Seth's shoes and said that Cody couldn't make a choice for WrestleMania, so he'll make it for him and he picks The Rock. Out came The Rock who got, let's say, a mixed response. It was kind of fascinating because he got booed, but then the people who want to see Roman versus The Rock took over and cheered him. But then the people who wanted to boo him just booed louder. There were even dueling chants of we want Cody and Rocky sucks. And Rock cut a babyface promo saying he likes the passion of the fans, but then introduced the members of the press to the Cody crybabies. Heel turn! He says no matter what you think, you will respect what Rocky was about to show. And he brought up a PowerPoint presentation of the Bloodline family tree, which is timely as Ollie Davis will be covering that whole thing tomorrow here on WrestleTalk. And he told the fans there, if you don't think Roman versus Rock is a big deal, then it doesn't matter what you think. This will be the biggest main event and he shook hands with Roman Reigns. This brought out Cody Rhodes, who said all of this was BS. He actually said bullshit, but because I don't want to get a censor in here, he said BS. No way, I just said bullshit. He won the Royal Rumble, and it's his choice. In the main event of WrestleMania 40, I choose Roman Reigns. Roman told Cody that he should really go over and join the losers bracket with Seth because he's irrelevant, just like his dad. Cody said you can't be head of the table when neither he nor The Rock have been cooking for the past two years. Both of your grandfathers would be ashamed of them. A very annoyed and pissed off Rock stepped in and said when Cody disrespects Roman, he disrespects him and his whole family. So now we have a problem and he slapped Cody Rhodes. All four men, yes, Seth was still out there this whole time, got into an argument and that was that. But backstage, Triple H was being interviewed by Jackie and in a very WCW-like moment, said that some people went into business for themselves and there's a lot of egos running wild. Rock and Roman walked past him and The Rock swore a bunch at Triple H, telling him to fix this or he and Roman will. He swore, a bunch more, even dropping an F-bomb, and walked away. Social media posted a video of Rock and Roman leaving the building together as a unit. The top comment of the video upload of this on YouTube said this wasn't a press conference, this was cinema. And while I wouldn't go that far, it was very good and I was very, very sports entertained. It made Seth look like a massive dork, but the stuff between Cody, Roman and Rock was really interesting and very, very well performed. Rock turning heel and joining forces with Roman is a twist that I didn't think would happen, but overall, it's just nice to see that WWE have pivoted away from a bad decision into a good one and just did the simplest thing possible. Over the last week, we've had a lot of messages on the Rest Talk podcast booking themselves into pretzel loops just to try and get to Roman versus Cody. It's a night one thing. It's a night two thing. It's a money in the bank thing. It's a SummerSlam thing. You do something at Elimination Chamber, etc., etc. But the best answer was 
Royal Rumble winner Cody Rhodes just picks top champion Roman Reigns. It's one match and there's no need to over egg the pudding. And that's what WWE have done. It does mean that this SmackDown segment now makes no sense, but that's by the by. This week's press conference was four out of five. I was thoroughly sports entertained. So what comes next? It feels like we're working towards a tag match of Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins versus The Rock and Roman Reigns, which some fans speculated could happen at Elimination Chamber. However, Dave Meltzer knows that on Twitter, and this has been the case for quite a while, neither Rock nor Roman will be in Australia for the Elimination Chamber show, not to mention Seth Rollins is still injured, which means it could be the main event of night one of WrestleMania. Meltzer added on Twitter that nobody said that tag match would happen, but expected it to be the case. I guess the alternative for Seth Rollins is to face the winner of the Chamber on night one with Roman and Cody on night two, though that scenario means that The Rock doesn't wrestle at all. There was a report earlier in the week from Meltzer that said all of this has been a work from the very start, but Sean Ross Sapp on Twitter continued to note this was not the original story. The other teased match from the press conference for WrestleMania was Becky Lynch versus Rhea Ripley, who had a stare down over the Women's World Heavyweight Championship, so I think everyone can relax now on who's winning that chamber match. Sorry, Liv. But this, at the end of the day, was a press conference where the press got to ask wrestlers questions, so there's actually some backstage news coming out of it as well. And speaking of Becky Lynch, both she and Seth Rollins were asked about their contracts. 2024 is a big year for wrestling deals, especially in WWE. As we discussed yesterday, Cody Rhodes reportedly has not signed a new deal with WWE. There are conflicting reports on whether or not Drew McIntyre has put pen to paper on his new contracts. And there's question marks over Sheamus, AJ Styles, and Dijak down in NXT, as it was revealed earlier this week, that his deal is up this summer. As I mentioned on yesterday's Wrestle Talk News, I fully expect Cody Rhodes to sign a new deal with WWE, and given just how he's been presented on Raw as of late, I'd expect McIntyre to do the same. Two other names that I would expect to re-sign, but this is the wacky world of professional wrestling, so nothing is for sure, are Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins. It had been reported late last year that both of their deals were coming up in 2024, and they confirmed this news as correct when speaking at the press conference to Sean Ross Sapp. According to the Fightful Select write-up of the interviews, Becky had few words about her contract outside of confirming that it was up this year, and Sean Ross Sapp writes that Lynch told him that she wanted to look at what the best set of circumstances were for her talks with WWE. Rollins noted that he believes a deal will get done, adding that while he has ended a WrestleMania as champion, he has a goal of being an advertised main event for WrestleMania. Lest we forget, Seth nearly got one of those as the reported plan leading into WrestleMania was him defending his world title against CM Punk. However, Punk got injured during the Rumble and that match was off the table. Punk was there for the press conference in Las Vegas, however, to represent the company, but in true Punk fashion, he did share some issues he had. Many fans noted that it was weird that in all of the WrestleMania posters and at the press conference itself, there was a real lack of Bailey. You know, the winner of the 2024 Royal Rumble and one of the few confirmed actual matches for WrestleMania? Punk jokingly shared a mock-up of the Mania poster which had Bailey replacing all of the other wrestlers on it on his Instagram stories and later on posted a video saying, I really wanted to talk about Bailey and how she won the Royal Rumble and she wasn't represented on the poster for WrestleMania. I got caught up talking about The Rock and Reigns and Cody and Seth but very much in that main event mix is Bailey. She won the Royal Rumble. Don't you forget it. Put some respect on her name. You heard the man comments. Put some respect on Bailey's names in the comments down below. That goes for you too, 2K. The other bit of news coming out of the press conference is a new WWE show which will air exclusively on Twitter. WWE Speed, or as it will be known internationally, WWE The Bus That Couldn't Slow Down, will be a series of short matches with five minute time limits. Winners will receive a point for a win and be docked a point for a loss, with time limit draws earning zero points. The Hollywood Reporter notes that this will air for 52 weeks on Twitter and will feature wrestlers from Raw, SmackDown, and NXT. Back in December, WWE taped the first two matches for WWE Speed, which saw Bronson Reed take on Nathan Fraser, while Axiom faced Cedric Alexander. The show will be into air in the spring. <sighs> Doing things in about five minutes, getting more of our gimmicks, I guess. Maybe a return of a C2 type format could help All Elite Wrestling, as despite having a loaded episode this week, including Swerve vs. Hangman 3, Tony Khan's big announcement, and Sting going for the tag titles, the show was marginally down 
from last week. The show drew around 805,000 viewers, down by around 2% from the previous week, and about 10% down year on year. Dave Meltzer noted on Twitter that the number was a disappointment considering how loaded the card was. However, it's not all doom and gloom, as the 18 to 49 demo was up 7.7% from last week, and it's the third strongest number in that category in 2024. Speaking of Sting, and the man they called Sting was the man who won gold as he and Darby Allen won the AEW Tag Team Championships from Ricky Starts and Big Bill in a tremendously fun main event. However, according to Fightful Select, it nearly didn't happen. Fightful Select report that not only was Sting adamantly and long against winning the AEW Tag Team titles, for a long time, he was against even competing for them. Apparently, Sting was convinced to win the tag titles after it was explained to him that they were an undefeated tag team and, in the context of a TV show, they should be fighting for the tag titles. Fightful Select added that Sting went along with it and was all smiles after the match backstage. Sting was instrumental in picking his final opponents in AEW, which will be the Young Bucks and Revolution. It was revealed yesterday that due to incredibly strong ticket sales, AEW have released more seats for Revolution at the Greensboro Coliseum. But now go and check out the latest episode of Survival Series, where we had to name every TNA World Champion. Yes, I had a good time with this one.